Would you join me in our call to worship? Loving God, we come to you today with thankfulness. Oh God, we are thankful for the food that sustains us. Heavenly Father, we praise you. Oh God, we are thankful for the shelter that protects us. Gracious God, we appreciate what you have done. Oh God, we are thankful for the Almighty Lord, you are creator of all good things. Thank you, O God. Amen. Would you join with me in our prayer of invocation? Loving God, let our hearts be pure while we gather here. Help us to open up to you, Heavenly Father, to worship you and love you. Lead us down the right path while we praise you. Thank you, Lord, for your help. Amen. You may be seated. Our scripture reading this morning is from Acts chapter 2, 1 through 21. Here is God speaks to us today from his word. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came down to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all of these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthenons, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadonia, uh, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It is only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet, prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your, your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Gosh, that's a huge piece of real estate, and y'all are fighting over like a square inch. Okay, well, you sit right in the middle. Noah, you're the favorite, you get to sit in the middle. Okay, there you go. Now, guess what? 
y'all are going to hear the sermon for you, but also the sermon for them. We've got so much going today that I'm going to give one and we're going to be done, okay? So, so don't get bored, okay? Don't get bored, all right? So I want to talk about Pentecost. Fifty days after Jesus was resurrected from the, bed, the dead and ten days after his ascension, guess what happened? All of a sudden, there was a great rush of wind. I mean, you know how wind is in our home, don't you? Wind just comes and blows you away. Well, this was bigger than that kind of wind. And each person had a tongue of fire resting on their heads. Would that scare you? It would scare you, but it wouldn't you? That's good. I'm glad. It would scare me. It, it wouldn't scare you? Okay. And all these people out here had a tongue of fire resting on their head. Now, when you looked out and saw that, what, what would you think? Huh? Uh, okay. They've watched too many cartoons, I think. I don't know. <laughs> So you got these tongues of fire resting on your head and the disciples got up and started speaking in other language. What if you started speaking Spanish just like that and you started speaking French just like that and you started speaking Japanese? Wouldn't that be cool? Okay. I'm not winning. I'm not winning. So, so you got up and told about Jesus in a language you have never spoken before. And you were filled with the Holy Spirit. Would that be cool or what? And then after, after you did that, then you knew you had to go to the far ends of the world and tell people about Jesus. And guess what? There was no plane. There was no car. You walked. Well, now, a boat they did have, yes. But you got to walk to the boat. And there, a fast boat, OK. Well, outboard motors weren't really invented then, but anyway. So Pentecost is a time when the Holy Spirit comes. Now, can you see the Holy Spirit? Can you see it? No, you can't, can you? you no one has ever seen the Holy Spirit. Nobody. But no, you haven't. <laughs> and, and, and let me tell you how it's like. Y'all see these balloons over here? <clears throat> What's this balloon filled with? Helium, exactly. And helium is lighter than air. So when you fill it with helium, it stands up, doesn't it? Now, do we, if we let the helium loose, could you see it? No, you couldn't see it. But you know it's there, don't you? That's like the Holy Spirit. You know it's there because the balloon stands up. That's the Holy Spirit in you. And so you can't see it, but you know it's there because you act more like Jesus. How about that? Now, I'm going to do something really, really radical. You ready to watch me do something radical? You want it? Okay, we'll do it. <clears throat> Maybe. Maybe. It's tied. Yes. So, if we are filled. With, and I'm going to get you guys a balloon after church, okay? 
If we are filled with the Holy Spirit, can we be filled with love and tell people about Jesus? And if I was outside and let this go, what would happen? Way, way up, wouldn't it? But we're not outside, are we? And we've got a lot of planes. Well, it will come down eventually. We're going to see. Okay, y'all ready? You ready? Yeah. Let's do it. It's not. Oh, look. One's not going to. Come on, buddy. There we go. Oh, the Holy Spirit let loose. And now we have the church. Isn't that cool? Yeah! <laughs> I finally won! Alright guys, you get to go and have fun. <laughs> That's the best I ever got for a children's sermon. <laughs>